Hey guys, Mac Kentucky Range Time, back with another episode of our 44 Mag Ballistic Gel Block Test Series. And today we're looking at the Sierra 240 grain jacketed hollow core bullet. And uh, I've had several requests for this bullet. Uh, I, my local shops don't usually keep Sierra bullets uh, or, or a good selection of them. And uh, so uh, after having several requests for this bullet, I, I was doing an order and I've actually found some of these in stock. And, and honestly, they're not always in stock on the online stores where I order as well. So uh, when I did find these, I did go ahead and pick a box of these up to do some testing with. And uh, so that's what we're doing today. Um, let's turn around here and take a quick look at this loading and then we'll head on out to the range and see how this thing will do. All right, so a pretty straightforward loading on this one. We got a Winchester large pistol primers, uh, Winchester uh, 296 powder, of course the, the Sierra 240 grain jacket of hollow core bullets here that we were just looking at. And here is a good look at the loading on this one. And uh, you can see this uh, this hollow core down inside this bullet here. There's a pretty large cavity down in there. And uh, the cantilever on this bullet, this bullet was seated to the loading depth given. Uh, I typically will go ahead and, and see it a little bit closer to the top of the cantilever before I crimp these, but I was going off the, uh, the book data. I think this data either came out of the Sierra manual or maybe off of uh, the Hodgins Reloading Data Center. I can't actually remember where I picked that data out at now, uh, but the data will be coming up on the spreadsheet here. It'll be in the slideshow at the end of the video. Uh, all the load data will be there, <clears throat> and all the physical characteristics of the test bullets, uh, fire test bullets, will also be there. And uh, there's, of course, clear ballistic gel that we're using. So uh, let's head on out to the range and see how this thing does. All right, guys. Back with uh, another episode of our 44 Mag Gel Block Test Series. And the bullet for this test is going to be the Sierra 240 grain jacketed hollow core bullet. And uh, we'll be running it out at the 20 inch Rossi lever action rifle nine and a half inch Ruger Super Red Hawk, the six inch uh, Taurus Raging Bull, and the two and three quarter inch Smith & Wesson Combat Magnum. Uh, velocities will be coming on the Garmin, and we've got clear ballistics gel block set up out here at 30 feet. So let's get into this. Velocity of 1793.4. Not bad. All right, let's go check out the catch. All right, guys, wound track for the 240 grain Sierra jacket of Holocore started right here. We had pretty much complete expansion in here by about an inch, inch and a half. Uh, modest permanent wound cavity here, uh, but the temporary wound cavity was gonna be very, very impressive. Uh, we've got some copper jacket here, some lead here, a little bit more copper here. Pass behind this other test bullet here. Uh, more copper, more copper here at 26, and looks like our final resting spot is here at about 32 and a half inches. I'm not sure if you guys can see that on the camera or not, but it is just into the third gel block here. So, all right, let's go back and see what the pistols will do with this one. All right, guys, next up is the Ruger nine and a half inch Super Red Hawk with this uh, 240 grain Sierra jacketed hollow core bullet. Impressive velocity there at 1540.4 foot per second. Let's go see if we got the catch. All right, guys, I did not do a good job of getting this thing placed over to the side like I wanted. Uh, entry was right in here, and this bullet comes down. We get nice expansion on it. It's hard to really hard to tell it literally is right in the middle of these other uh these other wound tracks here but then we pop out down here and we go into straight line penetration right here around 
17, 18 inches, this thing starts to rotate and spin a little bit. We got a nice uh, wound channel out here from about 18 to 23 inches. And then we go into straight line penetration down here with an overall penetration of 31 inches. And I, I really wish I got a better shot on that one because the wound track on this one would have been really nice to see. Um, looking from the mushrooming on it, it would have been uh, probably really similar to the rifle. So, all right, let's go back and see what we can do. All right, guys, so uh, next up is the, uh, the Taurus Raging Bull uh, with a six inch barrel. All right, so I was trying to hold that one over to the right hand edge and pretty sure that I missed right on the edge. Looks like it rolled just off the edge and shot out the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a reshoot on this one. Actually, that gives us a two shot velocity now. which just happens to be 1433.2 foot per second with a 7.8 standard deviation. Let's go see if we got the catch. So no catch with either one of those. Uh, both of them came down here and ended up squirting out of the side. So let's go try a third one. All right, Taurus Raging Bull, shot number three. I'm just gonna go look for the catch on this one. All right, guys, we got a catch, and we got some pretty interesting stuff going on with this round, so let's go take a look. All right, guys, so one track on this bullet starts right here, and I ended up with all three of these really close. Uh, the first two squirted out the side. The third one, though, stayed in, so we move right on down through here and truck down to about 25 and a half inches. And check this out. So we've got a massive cavitation here at 25 and a half out to about 31 inches. Uh, this bullet um, got unbalanced here at some point and moved from straight line penetration, I'm guessing to, it started tumbling at this point. And uh, so then at 31 and a half or so, it straightened back up and right on out here and you can see Again, right here, see that's 36. Yeah, 32 and 10. So we got 42 inches of total penetration, but right here's our bullet. And it does not appear that we got much expansion on this thing. So uh, we were looking at pretty much straight line penetration on this thing until it started uh, rotating and spinning. And then this cavitation was from that rotation that upset once this bullet got upset and started rotating. So um, not any kind of a thing that you could count on actually running this. So having said that, that pretty much sets up the stage for the two and three quarter inch. Uh, I'm expecting some pretty massive straight line penetration out of it. All right, guys. So uh, Sierra jacketed hollow core, 240 grain out of the Smith & Wesson two and three quarter inch combat magnum. And at 1,370 foot per second, we did not get expansion on this bullet uh, with the six inch barrel uh, Taurus Raging Bull. And I would not expect much expansion out of this bullet here either. So let's see what we can do. All right. 
velocity of 1240.7. I'm really not sure where that impacted the gel block. Let's go see. All right, guys, point of the entry was right here. And like I said, I wasn't expecting much much going on with this bull as far as expansion goes. Uh, down here at about 19 inches, this bullet does start to tumble. We've got a nice cavitation going on here from about 19 out to 27 and a half inches. And it pretty well settles down and continues on out here that looks like about 38 inches of total penetration and does not appear that this bullet has deformed much at all. So, all right, we'll get these dug out and take a closer look at them back at the shop and I have some commentary. All right, so back in the shop and we got these things dug out and uh, this is the, the Rossi 20 inch lever action, uh, the Ruger nine and a half inch Super Red Hawk, the six and a half inch Taurus Raging Bull. And yeah, I did call this a six inch earlier, but it actually is a six and a half. I got to doing some research on that gun after we were at the range the other day and uh, discovered that that was a six and a half inch barrel, uh, five and a half inches of rifling and a full inch of porting on the end of it. And this is the two and three quarter inch Smith and Wesson Combat Magnum. So, uh, you know, not a lot going on here for the Taurus or the Smith & Wesson, the two shorter barrels here. But uh, this Super Red Hawk did an amazing job with this bullet. And so did the rifle. Uh, the rifle actually shed quite a bit of weight. It, it folded up here pretty good and shed quite a bit of weight on the way through. I'll have uh, numbers coming up here on the spreadsheet in a few minutes, but uh, so you can see how much more uh, of this lead folded back and broke away on the rifle round than what it did on the on the Super Red Hawk. So as the rifle round goes farther down range, it's actually going to finish up closer to this profile as this thing slows down. Uh, the difference in velocity between the rifle and the Super Red Hawk was uh, 253 foot per second. So this is uh, 253 foot per second faster, and that's how much more lot weight uh, that it loses because of that extra velocity uh, just con continues to fold that lead back around and, and shear it off. So when this thing slows down, you know, 250 foot slower uh, at whatever distance that is, uh, this is the kind of performance we're going to get out of it. So this is going to be a really good, uh, really good load in this rifle. Um, same thing with the Red Hawk. That's uh, that's going to be a good load at, at at probably any distances that you're going to be shooting a handgun with. Now, for a six and a half inch barrel, this is not very, very not not very good performance at all, guys. Honestly, and and the two and three quarter inch uh, combat magnum, I was uh, I was not really impressed with either one of, the, of these bullets out of these two guns. And uh, uh, we, we test a lot of bullets here and we see things not open up, but not at 1,241 foot per second. Uh, that's what the, the Smith & Wesson was at. And this is at 1,409 foot per second and it didn't open up. So, uh, uh, you know, 1,540, and 1409, 130 foot per second difference between these two. Uh, I just don't see it. Maybe this was a fluke, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, just uh, just not not near as impressed uh, with this Sierra bullet as I am with some of the other hollow points that we've tested. Uh, the, of course, the, the XTP just performs uh, very well uh, across the, the, the whole range, so. And uh, so, you know, for, for a premium bullet, and, you know, these actually run quite a bit more than the XTPs. Um, so if you're running these out of rifle loads, you know, it's probably going to be more equivalent to like the 240 grain flat point XTP um, as far as the performance goes. And, and maybe it's designed 
to not be ran out of these shorter barrels, uh, to be ran out of the rifles and the longer ones. But it is, a, it is built as a handgun bullet. So there it is, the uh, Sierra 240 grain jacket of Holocore. And this is out of their, their Sportsmasters line of bullets. And uh, one thing I noticed, uh, let's see if I can get in here, the, uh, the little serrations around this bullet that typically will allow this thing to start expanding and folding back are not as pronounced as I've seen on other Sierra bullets of this, of this style. And, and maybe that was lending itself to uh, this thing not starting to expand at the sword velocities. But I know that for 20% more value uh, cost on these is, is what they run over the Hornady XTP. The XTP bullet performed much, much better. So, you know, if I want to pay a 20% premium, I expect to get uh, a little bit better quality and, and, and at least equivalent expansion out of it. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed in the Sierra Bullet, honestly, uh, especially in the shorter barrels. And uh, I don't know, guys, that's it. I mean, yeah, the results are what they are. I mean, you can go back and watch the, the 240 grain Hornady XTP uh, test or the 240 grain XTP flat point test. And, and <clears throat> so, uh, don't take my word for it. Well, actually take my word for it. Go back and watch the 240 grain XTP test and, and, uh, and then come back and, and compare it, the results to what we get with this. Now there was one difference. I was running the, the four inch, uh, uh, five inch with four inch threaded barrel, uh, Taurus tracker versus the, uh, the six and a half inch, uh, the, the raging bull. <clears throat> when I tested the, the XTP, but three of those four guns are the same, and uh, you can you can you can watch these videos side by side and do a direct comparison, and and for the price difference in these bullets, uh, you tell me what you think. Let's go back and watch those, and let's hear it in the comments. Uh, I, I I really I really was disappointed. I mean, it doesn't happen very often, but you know I've always had such a high regard for Sierra bullets and, and I had a lot of people asking for a test on this one uh, and uh, and I was really excited to get it tested out because I was expecting to, to get something that I hadn't seen before and it just wasn't there so all right guys uh, if you haven't already please hit that like and subscribe button if you've got any questions leave them in the comments and as always uh, feel free to share any of my videos uh, the likes uh, the com the short comments and hitting the like button and, uh, and, and watching the videos all changes the algorithm. It really helps the page out, so I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, the page is what it is because of you guys, so, and, uh, and, and that doesn't go unnoticed. So, all right, guys, Matt with Kentucky Range Time. Uh, stay tuned. I've got lots of stuff coming up over the next several weeks. I've got some 8.6 blackout, some 300 blackout. I've got 250 Beowulf tests that are in editing right now. And I've got three, four more 44 mag bullets to, uh, to test up as well. And some of those are loaded up and ready to go. And uh, so keep an eye out for those. And they'll be coming your way soon. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.